Today we're going to look at a relatively easy sentence correction question. Um, of course I say that and then it's only easy if you actually know what to look for. So hopefully we're going to find out in this video. Uh, as always, I had to redact certain portions for copyright. So go ahead and look in the description box, click the link to GMAT Club to see the full question unredacted, take a look at it and come back when you're ready. All right, uh, so as always, we're gonna go ahead and start with A. So A is always just a repetition of the original sentence. Despite the increasing number of women graduating from law school, comma, the proportion of judges and partners who are women have not risen to a comparable extent. Great, so the reason I said this was easy is because the major concept this question is testing is noun verb agreement. So we start with a subordinate clause, right? Despite the increasing number of women graduating from law school, comma, all right, well, that's obviously not a standalone sentence, it's dependent. So this is gonna be our independent clause. Uh, so what's the subject of this? The proportion. All right, so the proportion is our subject. Um, and how do I know that? How do I know it's not judges and partners that are the subject? Because judges and partners, those are nouns. So why couldn't those be the subject? Well, the reason for this is because I am noticing this word of, right? Of is a very important word to notice in GMAT sentence correction. Of is a preposition. And prepositions are often used to create prepositional phrases. And so usually it goes preposition and then there's a noun after it. Here there's two nouns combined with the word and. And essentially a prepositional phrase like this is just a kind of modifier. So I'm actually gonna get my black pen out and cross this off. You know, it's non-essential information that's describing proportion. It's the proportion, proportion of what? Oh, here's some more information, judges and partners. So when you're looking at a full phrase like this, you sort of need to figure out what is the true subject. So it's the proportion. So then we ask ourselves, okay, is that singular or plural? It doesn't end in S, and so it's probably singular. So if it's singular, we need to make sure that it matches its verb. So the proportion, who are women, again, who are women is just describing proportion. Um, well, actually, technically, it's describing what I crossed off here, but that's fine. Uh, the proportion have not risen. Well, that doesn't make sense. We have a mismatch here. We wouldn't say the proportion have because have would go with a plural subject. We would say the proportion has. So we need this has, have is incorrect. So any answer choices that have this subject verb disagreement, we can cross off. So obviously A is out since it's a repeat, uh, the proportion have, B is out, C, the proportion has, that's okay, we can keep C, D, has, we can keep it, E has, we can keep it. Um, so great, so that's our main error. Well, now we have to see what else is there. What are the other differences between these? You know, they both say the proportion of judges and partners, right? The proportion of judges and partners, proportion of judges and partners, proportion of judges and partners. Well, this one has women, um, women in it, but other than that, they're all the same. Really, the major difference here is with this word yet in the beginning. So yet, the proportion, whereas C doesn't have it. So it's an interesting question. It's like, does this, does the addition of this word yet provide us with more clarity or less clarity in terms of the meaning of the sentence? Um, this I would say isn't tested that often, but it is worth noting how important the non underlying word despite is here. Despite is a contrast keyword. So if you're starting a sentence with a dependent clause, something like this, it says despite X, blah, 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 comma, that's the other big structural marker here, Y, blah, 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 blah. You only need one contrasting keyword. So you can just say despite X, blah, 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 comma, Y. You don't need another one because it would be redundant. It's like you're saying the same thing twice, despite X, comma, blah, 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 yet Y, mm-mm. And I think sometimes people think you need both because it's they almost think of it like parallelism, but that's not parallel at all. So really you only need one <laughs> contrasting keyword per sentence, just one. So it could be despite, yet, although, however, whatever it is. Um, 
So if you're seeing a lot of them piled on in a sentence like this, probably not correct. So of these options, let's just check C to make sure that it's perfectly clear. So despite the increasing number of women graduating from law school, comma, the proportion of judges and partners who are women has not risen comparably. Great. Absolutely nothing wrong about that. Um, maybe there might be some confusion about comparably, right? That does it does that work to end the sentence? So it ends in ly. So that tells us that this is an adverb and it's right next to the verb that it's describing, has not risen, has not risen comparably. That adverb is modifying the verb and it's placed right next to it. So there's no issue whatsoever with the modifiers here. Um, so therefore, C is our correct answer. And again, what this is testing is relatively straightforward subject verb agreement. That's why I said it was easy, but less straightforward, this kind of interesting style difference where you have D and E being redundant with sort of the double contrasting keywords that's unnecessary and C being just, just leaner. It's, it's saying the same thing with less words and the GMAT always, always values concision.